Thank you. So today I'll give you a very brief overview of the NSF QLCI that you've heard both the governor and Fred and Margaret talk about. And also, you know, sort of what I see happening in a vision of building a regional quantum ecosystem in Illinois and in, in the Midwest. So what I'd like to do is, is open by, uh, again, giving a brief overview of quantum at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. So in two, uh, 2019, we launched the Illinois Quantum Information Science and Technology Center, or IQUIS, to bring together the disciplines and the researchers that are needed to solve all the problems that you heard about today. And I think Margaret really made a good point about how these solutions will require an interdisciplinary and convergent approach. So we have more than 40 faculty working in these areas with very vibrant and active research programs with more than 100 publications each year. One way that we're also bringing people together to really get them into a space and working on uh, real problems is in a 2200 square foot quantum hardware test bed, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a few slides. So we've been growing quickly, and I think you've heard from uh, several people today about how there are uh, many efforts where Illinois and the Chicago area are playing a big role. So at Illinois, we're leading uh, several new programs, including the QLCI that I'll tell you about today. Also a DOE Energy Frontier Research Center focused on quantum sensing. And the NSF funded q to work program for quantum education for K through 12 that Margaret just discussed. There are great synergies with programs that we're partnering on, including two of the five DOE National Information Quantum Science Centers, led by Argonne and Fermilab. And we also have researchers participating in QSTEAM, which was an education convergence accelerator program that Margaret also highlighted. And we're a core member of the Chicago Quantum Exchange, which we view as a just fabulous uh, instrument for amplifying investments collaborations between multiple stakeholders, including the private sector, like the finance sector and academia and national labs. And so what I see here are these wonderful synergies between all these programs where um, there are great opportunities to help each other and to reach out more broadly. What we look at as our mission is really usually centers around bringing people together. So specifically for IQIS, merging talent, research, and technology to accelerate quantum information science and engineering and to train up quantum workforce for the future. So we do this by supporting advanced research and innovation, bringing together, um, st bringing students to quantum information science uh, at an early stage, and then cultivating partnerships with academia, industry, and government. And I think through this combination of targeted research, incubating ideas and technology, and really embedding students with researchers at all levels, this is how we advance the field and grow that workforce um, that we need. One thing I think um, that I'm proud about and I think is special about the University of Illinois is we have excellence in the core disciplines that are needed to solve these challenges at a very large scale. So to give you an example, there are 4,500 undergraduate majors and 2,000 graduate students across top-ranked CS, ECE, and physics programs at the University of Illinois. This is a broad and deep talent uh, pool, and the throughput of energy and young students and talent is uh, really just a fantastic thing to be a part of. Let me tell you a little bit about this IQIS testbed, which plays a big role in the, the QLCI as well. And the idea here is to connect together quantum hardware with quantum trainees and researchers from many different disciplines. So to really make a space where we can bring together students and researchers and CS and ECE and physics and material science and have them have um, a location to work together on problems where they can see the whole set, the whole stack from the base hardware level up to even a cloud access. So the idea here is to co-locate different quantum technologies. We're starting with the leading technologies that are the most developed, which are ion trap qubits, superconducting qubits, and photonic qubits. As I mentioned, to combine expertise across many fields, and then to be able to interconnect these different technologies and put together a full stack solution for hybrid elements. We're currently engaging with industry partners on technology solutions, coming up with applications and use cases for distributed platforms and hybrid approaches and also developing cloud and instructional access to bring this testbed and these technologies to a very wide audience. And to give students, maybe even in economics and in computer science, the ability in their classes to access the hardware and do something with a qubit and see what that really looks like. 
and then maybe come over to the test bed and, and take a look at it. And one other thing I think that's a great opportunity here based on um, how everything is growing in this region is there's an opportunity for us to incubate technologies and then expand those technologies into the Chicago quantum physics facilities, like the Harper Court expansion that you see in the back here, and then the quantum facility that um, the Rebuild Illinois bill uh, funded at the $200 million level that Governor Pritzker mentioned this morning. So I see these great linkages across Illinois and um, also with our partners like the University of Wisconsin, who's a partner in the QLCI, and um, also regionally Ohio State, which is the leading QC. So let me move on now to say a little bit about uh, the new Quantum Leap Challenge Institute that I'm leading out of the University of Illinois on hybrid quantum architectures and networks. And the QLCI program, as mentioned by Margaret, is really the, an NSF flagship program that is very complementary to the DOE um, National Quantum Centers. They were both titles in the National Quantum Initiative Act, and I think we live in a very exciting time where uh, the opportunities are, are great for all of these new centers, the three QLCIs and the five DOE centers to work together. So I'm, I'm the PI and director of this center. There are co-PIs here at the University of Wisconsin and the University of Chicago, which are the partners in the center. Our scientific mission is to achieve distributed quantum processing and networks of hybrid architectures for scaling up information processing and accelerating new applications. This approach is really inspired by classical computing. And I think you heard both from Fred and Margaret today how that is a really great place to look for ideas for how to accelerate technology. You know, your, the laptop I'm using to give this presentation is made of hybrid technologies that are separately engineered to work as best as they can to come together and provide large scale computing. Our supercomputers of today use the same approach. They use a cluster approach. So that's the idea here. Take a modular approach to scaling up processing and actually also be able to connect together different technologies in order to optimize a machine and its performance. It's the right time to do this. Many of these technologies have matured over the last decade to the point where they can really be fielded and we can start thinking about this the next step of evolution. And I think the other exciting um, thing I see is that there's now a generation of new researchers, um, many of whom we've hired here at Illinois, who view themselves as quantum scientists and engineers. They don't really look at themselves necessarily as physicists or electrical engineers or computer scientists anymore. They're excited about progress in this new area, which takes all of these different disciplines and um, sees what comes out of the convergence of them. So by the numbers, our center has these three Midwestern universities, the University of Illinois, which is the lead, University of Chicago, and University of Wisconsin. It's a regional center, which I think presents us with many exciting opportunities. There are 47 scientists and engineers um, that are uh, performers. We have 11 private sector partners, and our private sector partners span um, companies working on quantum technologies, but also companies like finance companies that are trying to discover new use cases, or even a little bit more adjacent where they just want to understand and get out ahead of these technologies, understand what it could do for their industry. And we're definitely uh, interested in engaging with an even wider set of partners, and I'd be glad to have a discussion about how we could work together. We also have uh, collaboration with three national labs, and our research focuses on three main areas, which, is, which are sort of hardware-based, software-based, and looking ahead to new types of qubits. I think as Margaret pointed out, we don't really know what the winner is yet. So uh, keeping our options open and trying to um, advance uh, materials design to make new qubits available is, is rather important. So I don't want to get too technical here, but maybe for this audience, one way to look at um, what HCAN, this QLCI, will do is through the lens of s and goals and challenges and the types of things we want to deliver in five years. So as I mentioned, you know, this, uh, one of the main motivations here is to find an alternative approach to scaling quantum processors. So don't be monolithic, but look like a classical supercomputer, which has many nodes that work together, and a scheduler, which distributes work amongst them. And also to go hybrid, to put together, let's say, a very uh, high coherence quantum memory um, and marry it to very fast uh, logic gates. And so one thing we hope to do is deploy three plus node test beds at each of our institutions that use these features and to make them available to a wide user base. I, I think we also heard a lot today from Fred and Margaret about how you really need to rethink um, what a software stuff looks like depending on the hardware. And here for this distributed approach, we've just scratched the surface of, of what's possible and the right way to operate a machine. 
And so we're looking to, to develop um, the quantum versions of things like a message passing interface, distributed algorithms and models and non-classical benchmarks that allow us to advance that kind of stack. Also, we've just, we have uh, knowledge of very few applications, especially for distributed hybrid architectures. So really looking hard at that and thinking about how it can provide value to um, different sectors, both in fundamental research, but in areas like uh, finance is quite important to us. So there are, are places to go like heterogeneous fingerprinting and um, private searching, which can really help on the side of privacy and security and also distributed computing, which um, brings opportunities to do larger scale computing than any one entity can, can carry out. And finally, as I mentioned, we're investigating and optimizing future hardware platforms. A key thing I think what we needed to advance the field is to develop air resistant qubits. qubits. So we have plans to do that and integrate them into our test beds and also the software stack. And that will involve developing new material solutions. And we have several programs to look at different types of materials. So what I see when I look at Illinois and the region is something very exciting, which is a confluence of academic and research excellence at a wide range of institutions, a deep talent pipeline, and an innovation ecosystem that can really advance supporting uh, quantum information science and engineering and take it to the next level. So if you'd like to learn more, please um, take a look at our website at, for iQuest at the University of Illinois and contact me um, or our management team for more information. Thank you.